the healthy development of young children in the early years of life literally does provide a foundation for just about um, all of the challenging social problems that, that our society and other societies face. What we're learning, um, not just from behavioral and developmental research, but also now from exciting developments in neuroscience and molecular biology, is how much early experience um, from birth, in fact, even before birth, how much this experience literally gets into our bodies and, and shapes our uh, learning capacities, our behaviors, and our physical and mental health. The brain is basically built from the bottom up. First, the ba brain builds basic circuits that are responsible for basic skills, and, and then more complex circuits are built on top of those basic circuits as we develop more complex skills. Biologically, the brain is prepared to be shaped by experience. It's expecting um, the experiences that a young child has to literally influence the formation of its circuitry. It's built into our biology. The interaction between genetics and experience that shapes brain architecture is embedded in the reciprocal relationship, the relationships that children have with the adults in their lives. And by that we mean um, what we refer to as the serve and return nature of children's interaction with their own adults. Development and the impact of experience on development is not a one-way street. It's a back and forth interaction. The brain is a highly integrated organ which has multiple sections that specialize in different um, uh, kind of processes. So we have parts of the brain that are involved more in cognitive function and other parts that are involved in processing of emotion and parts involved in seeing and hearing. So if a child is emotionally uh, kind of well put together and socially competent, that will affect more positive and productive learning. And if a child is preoccupied with fears or anxiety, or is dealing with considerable stress, no matter how intellectually gifted that child might be, his or her learning is going to be impaired by that kind of emotional interference. So when we talk about healthy development in the early years, and particularly when we talk about preparing children to succeed in school, we cannot separate cognitive development from social and emotional development. Um, you can't have one without the other. All development builds on what comes before. So when children experience stable, nurturing relationships, it fosters the development of healthy circuitry. And when children experience uncertainty or instability or abusive or neglectful relationships, it literally disrupts the circuitry and the brain's architecture as it's being built. Um, over time, uh, this has a wear and tear effect and the more stress you have, the more causes of stress, and the longer your stress response, the more likely you are to have a whole range of problems uh, later on. It can affect the immune system, it can affect the cardiovascular system, and this is why excessive prolonged stress early in life is associated with a higher prevalence later, not only of learning problems and behavior difficulties, but also physical and mental health problems because the brain is optimally flexible and plastic early in life, but as it develops its circuitry and refines its circuitry, it loses some of its flexibility, which is why intervening early is so important, because as we often say, when it comes to brain circuitry, it's better to get it right the first time than to try to fix it later.